I do not enjoy watching Manchester United play football anymore. And I have not enjoyed Manchester United play football for a long, long while under Eric Ten Hag. And there's a few reasons for that, but I think the main reason is just the quality of football is atrocious. Just to jog your memory, Manchester United finished eighth in the Premier League last season with a negative goal difference, losing 14 out of our 36 games, or 38 games, pardon me, in the Premier League, and six draws. And of those 18 wins, we didn't really deserve to win most of those games. There was a lot of games where I watched Manchester United and I was scratching my head wondering how the hell we won. I was happy that we won. I was happy that we got the result because I still believed that there might be something to get behind. I still was willing to give this manager the benefit of the doubt, at least in the early days of last season. I started to change my mind towards the end of the season. That coupled with our horrible performance in the Champions League, finishing bottom of our Champions League group, only winning one game out of the six and losing four, which is completely horrendous in a group with Galatasaray and Copenhagen. No disrespect. Manchester United should at least, at the very least, worst case scenario, be getting third and getting knocked down to the Europa League. And somehow we did even worse than that. We achieved even worse than the bottom of the barrel, worse than the worst case scenario. Any club, big club in Europe, would have sacked their manager after a season like that, finishing eighth in your domestic league and bottom of your Champions League group. Any serious club in Europe would have pulled the trigger, regardless of the FA Cup, regardless of the Carabao Cup, because those things are not the end all be all. And they do not remove the context of how poor Manchester United were en route to those finals and in the rest of the other competitions. Remember the Newport game? How we didn't deserve to win that? Remember the Coventry game? How we didn't deserve to win that? Even the Liverpool game, to a certain extent, was just very chaotic. It wasn't a convincing, dominant performance by Manchester United. No, it was just Liverpool having a bit of an off day and Manchester United having a bit of a go and getting up for the one game of the season that you could actually argue was one of our better games. And the same could be said of the, the, the Manchester Derby in the FA Cup final. It was a one-off performance that does not represent in any way, shape or form what this Manchester United team has been over the last 18 months, which is dreadful. And you know what's funny? The people who defend Eric Ten Hag make up all these excuses. Injuries, you know, the fact that he didn't get Frankie de Jong and his priority targets and all this nonsense. And I just can't help but think, do these people not understand that part of being a manager in any profession or any industry is problem solving and responding to adversity? Sometimes you're going to be a manager in a corporate situation and your best employees are not going to be avail available. Maybe... There's a pregnancy and somebody takes a maternity leave. Maybe somebody gets sick. Maybe somebody just doesn't show up to work. You as the, the manager, as the senior professional in that office, in that team, in that department, have now got to figure out wagga one. You're the leader, meaning you've got to take accountability even for the things that are beyond your control because you're supposed to problem solve and respond to the adversity. That's part of being a manager. So you can absolutely judge a manager based on how they respond to injuries. Yes, injuries will hinder their ability to maybe challenge for titles, maybe win Champions Leagues, or whatever the aspiration was that season, but it doesn't mean you can't criticize the way they react to it. And Eric Ten Hag has done a poor job, despite all the extenuating circumstances that him and many other Manchester United fans, post, uh, ma many other Manchester United managers, post Sir Alex Ferguson, have had to deal with, he has definitely by far been the worst at responding to that adversity. Without a doubt, the only person who was worse was maybe Moyes and Renick. But the other three, he's definitely at the bottom of the pile. He's be behind uh, LVG for sure. He's behind uh, Jose Mourinho for sure. Definitely. Without a shadow of a doubt. And he's definitely behind Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The only argument you could use is the two trophies. And again, that is such a brain-dead, imbecilic, moronic argument. Because it discounts league form and the Champions League. It's like saying Wigan were actually a good team when they won the FA Cup, despite getting relegated that season, because you're ignoring the league form and just focusing solely on the domestic cup. And the annoying thing is, is there are still some Manchester United fans who are defending this manager because they're hiding behind the whole idea of unconditional support. They'll say things like, well, you know, you can't just support the team when, when, they're, when they're winning and they're successful. You know, you've got to back the team, win, lose or draw. Yeah, back the manager, give him time. And it's like... That sounds nice in theory, but if we're actually being honest, it doesn't make any sense because I support Manchester United, the institution, the idea, what it represents, its history, not just in terms of its success, but also just the stories that have been cultivated on and off the pitch by this brilliant football club. That's what I support. That's what I'm loyal to. That's why I still watch Manchester United every week. 
not because of Eric Ten Hag, not because of Marcus Rashford or Bruno Fernandes. I do not care about individuals, especially if I feel like those individuals are working against the thing I hold so dear to my heart. So it does not make any sense to me why you would be so loyal to a group of players, a group of millionaires who don't even know who you are. They don't know your name. They don't know where you live. They don't know that you watch them every week. They don't care about you. They do not care. Just because they point at the badge and raise their fists in the air after scoring a goal, it doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything. At least in this context, it doesn't. So I vehemently disagree with anybody who claims that somebody's not a proper fan or supporter because they're criticizing the team and they're voicing their concerns. You have every right to voice concerns. If you're in a, a, a partnership or a relationship or with, with a person or you're running a business that you love and hold dearly to your heart and something or someone is working against that which you love, you have every right to call it out. It is a nonsense to define support as this constant positivity regardless of results and regardless of circumstances. That's not support. That's toxic positivity. That's delusion. So, uh, you know, that's the annoying thing. You actually had Manchester United fans writing a petition, begging the club to keep this guy as manager because of an FA Cup win. How the mighty have fallen. It is absolutely embarrassing. You know, I could go on for ages, but I'm going to end the video there. Losing, I mean, it wasn't even a loss, but it feels like a loss. Drawing to FC20 at home is absolutely diabolical. It's unacceptable. On top of everything that this manager has done, he continues to stoop lower and lower in the barrel but hey, so Alex drew away in Europe, right? So Rome wasn't built in a day. Back the manager.